Hi, I'm Mike Marin. Today, we'll discuss the concept of a hypothesis test for a population mean. We call this a one-sample t-test. Now, we often collect data, and then we use that data to calculate an estimate, say, the mean of a variable. We may hypothesize that the true population mean is greater than, less than, or different from some value. We can use a hypothesis test to test the claim about the true mean. Take this lake as an example. Sustainable fishing regulations dictate that we must let fish mature, and fishermen may only begin fishing once there is convincing evidence that the mean length of fish in the lake is greater than 35 centimeters. Of course, we cannot measure all the fish in this lake, and so instead we take a random sample. Let's take a look at a sample of 25 fish. We can see that for these 25 fish, the sample mean length is 41 centimeters, and the sample standard deviation of the length is 12 centimeters. Now, our estimate of the mean length from our sample is greater than that 35 centimeters we require in order to begin fishing in the lake, but we know that sample means vary around the true mean and are not exactly equal to the true mean. We also know that we're hungry, really hungry. And we want to get back to fishing as soon as we can. It's on us to provide convincing evidence that the mean length of these fish is greater than the 35 centimeters so we can start fishing. Let's get started. We'll begin with a question. Do we believe that the mean length of fish in this lake is truly greater than 35 centimeters? Or do we think our sample estimate of 41 ended up being greater than 35 centimeters merely by chance? In other words, is there enough evidence to claim the true mean length really is greater than 35 centimeters? Man, oh man, do I hope so. To answer this question, we will begin by assuming that the mean length of fish in the lake is 35 centimeters. The authorities won't let us fish unless the average length of fish is larger than 35 centimeters. From here, we can calculate something called a p-value, which measures how compatible our 41 centimeter sample estimate is with this assumed value of 35 centimeters. We would like to use our sample of 25 fish to try and make a statement about the population at large. Let's start with a hypothesis, or in other words, an assumption. Let's assume that the true mean length of fish in this lake is 35 centimeters. This is what we call a null hypothesis. We begin by assuming this to be true, that the true mean length of fish in this lake is 35 centimeters. Since we don't know the true standard deviation, we will substitute in the sample standard deviation in order to estimate the standard error of the mean. Recall that the standard error of the mean gives us an idea of typically how far a sample mean will deviate from the true mean. We would then know what the sampling distribution of the mean would look like under this null assumption that the true mean is 35 centimeters. Recall, we've taken a sample of 25 fish from the lake and found them to have a sample mean length of 41 centimeters. We can then ask the following question. Under our null hypothesis that the true population mean length of fish is 35 centimeters, what is the chance that we end up with a sample mean length of 41 centimeters or more? This probability is the p-value. If we were to calculate this probability, we would find that it's approximately 1% or 1 in 100. In other words, if the true mean length really is 35 centimeters, and we took 100 different samples of 25 fish, we'd expect that only one of the 100 samples would give us an average length of 41 centimeters or more just by chance. From here, we can conclude that one of two things must have happened. Either our initial assumption that the mean length is 35 centimeters is correct, and we ended up with a fairly rare estimate of the sample mean, 41, just by chance. Or, our initial assumption is incorrect, and the true population mean really is greater than 35 centimeters. We, of course, will never know for sure 
which of these is true in reality, but we can decide which we believe is more likely to be true. So how small should our p-value be before we will reject our null assumption? A general rule of thumb is to reject our null hypothesis if the p-value is less than 5%. And what's so special about that 5% cutoff, you ask? It's because Sir Ronald Fisher suggested this as a reasonable cut point and it's stuck. It is a reasonable yet arbitrary choice. Based on our p-value of 1%, we will reject our null hypothesis and conclude that we have enough evidence to claim that the true mean length is greater than 35 centimeters. Be careful. Relying solely on the p-value can be a dangerous thing as it does not allow us to make any statements about the precision of our estimate. To strengthen our analysis, we should also construct a confidence interval for the mean. Previously, we learned how to do this. We would say that we are approximately 95% confident that the true mean length of fish in this lake is between 36.2 to 45.8 centimeters. The entire range of acceptable values are all above the null value of 35 centimeters, which is in line with our conclusion that the true mean is greater than 35 centimeters. Can I get some tartar sauce over here, please? In addition to testing hypotheses about the mean, we're often interested in testing hypotheses on estimates that summarize the relationship between two or more variables. We can test hypotheses for these as well, and they're all based on the same concepts here. Don't forget to check out the statistics visualizations that accompany these videos. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching! Together we'll